नमस्ते एवरी वन वेलकम बैक चिल्ड्रन आई होप यू आर इंजॉइंग द वीडियोज दैट आई एम सेंडिंग यू एंड आई डेफिनेटली फील दैट दे आर हेल्पिंग यू इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग वेरियस कॉन्सेप्ट सो आर हियर टूडे इन दिस सेशन वील टेक अप द टॉपिक प्लांट अडेप्टेशन राइट सो आर ऑल ऑफ यू रेडी सो हेयर वी गो अडेप्टेशन इन प्लांट्स no plants are seen growing at all places some common places where we find them are forests wild plants are found in forests cactus is found in deserts lotus is found in ponds and ornamental plants are found in garden so what is the main thing to observe here is that different plants they grow in different climatic conditions and they differ in their shape size no uh, some bear thorns some have soft look some again have fleshy stem so they depending upon the different climatic conditions they grow in different places another thing which we should observe here is that all plants are different from each other no so they are uh having different kinds of features so before we switch over to the main part of uh, this topic let us understand few terms here first term is habitat habitat is a place where an organism naturally lives is called its habitat right so an organism an organism is a uh living being so where it naturally grows or the plant where it naturally grows is its habitat for example for example uh those pine trees they grow on mountains right so the mountain is the habitat of pine tree that is its natural habitat this is a different issue that you bring a pine tree and you grow it in plains uh it will survive there also but it will not grow to it full um height then we have adaptations what are adaptations special features required by an organism to adjust itself in a habitat are called adaptations as i told you that every plant is different from another why they are different from another because they have to survive in different climatic conditions right so they develop special features those special features are called their adaptations now we have seen two types of plants plants that grow in water bodies and plants that grow on land so two types of plants are aquatic plants and terrestrial plants aquatic plants are those plants that grow in water and terrestrial plants that grow on land are called terrestrial plants here in this session we'll talk about only aquatic plants so let us see adaptations in aquatic plants if you look at this water body so they it this water body has different kinds of plants if we look at the bank of the river say uh, the sea shore uh, the bank of the river then it has different kind of plants if we go further deep we'll find different kind of plants and if we go further deep into the water different kind of plants and the Uh, so forth so plants that grow on the banks of the river or on the uh, shallow waters near the water bodies we call them emergent plants so what is the first type first type is emergent plants if we go further deep we find another kind of plants called fixed plants then if we go further deep into the water we find underwater plants and then further deep we find floating plants so these are the four types of plants here one by one we'll talk about uh, four types of aquatic plants so let us take up first type emergent plants so as you know this is the location of emergent plants so these are the examples of emergent plants bulrush arrowhead sedge 
right now let us see how do they look in real so this is bulrush or cattail you must have seen it along the side of rivers then arrowhead as the name suggests the leaves are looking like arrows then we have uh, a sedge plant right so let us see what are the adaptations they show first is roots are fixed in the soil of the shallow water bed so as we know that roots of emergent plants is fixed and then leaves and stems extend out of the surface you can see the water body here the water body here and again the, they are grown in uh, near water bodies so leaves and stems of these plants they extend out of the surface that means they grow in shallow waters and leaves and stems can be seen easily so let us switch over to next kind of plants if we if go further deep we kind fixed plants uh, we see fixed plants and the examples of fixed plants are lotus and water lily so all of you know uh, how a water lily and a lotus looks like so let us see the adaptations shown by fixed plants they are fixed to the waterbed with the help of strong roots as the name suggests they are fixed plants so their roots are fixed to the waterbed now if we talk about stalk long hollow stalk you understand what is a stalk stalk is this portion of the leaf this portion of the plant where it is attached to the flower so the long hollow stalks that keep the flowers and leaves floating on the surface of the water so these uh, stalks are hollow from inside that makes them light in weight so that can uh, float on water they, they can survive in water currents if we talk about leaves they have a waxy coating you can see the uh, leaves here right they are uh, quite a shiny leaves so there is a waxy coating on the leaves which prevents them from rotting since these leaves they throughout their lives they remain in water so if we keep something in water for a long time there are chances that it rots so how they are adapted to uh, this problem they have a waxy coating which helps them which prevents them from getting wet and rotting then leaves have stomata on the upper side till now we know that plants have leaves on the underside uh, stomata on the underside of the leaf but here in this special case uh, the stomata are on the upper side of the leaf because the upper side is uh, exposed to sunlight it is open to exchange of gases so it is easier for a plant to uh, exchange the gases in open rather than from the surface which is touching the water so stomata are present on the upper side of the leaf so next we have underwater plants so here we have emergent plants then we discussed fixed plants now let us come to the underwater plants as i told you that underwater plants they remain submerged or immersed in the water so examples of underwater plants are hydrilla and velisneria let us see the real pictures this is hydrilla this is velisneria and this is pond weed. see if we compare them with fixed plants that is lotus or water lily we see that lotus and water lily they had broad leaves uh, floating on the surface of water but here in this case they remain submerged in water and they have long narrow thin leaves so why do they have long narrow, narrow leaves so that they can withstand the currents of water so they do not break adaptations shown by underwater plants remain completely submerged in water then they have thin narrow ribbon like leaves leaves do not have stomata but they take in carbon dioxide from the water through their body surface now here these plants 
the the function of the roots of these plants is just to ensure that it remains fixed to the water bed and roots do not perform much function for the plants so we say that uh, the they breathe through they take nutrients from the pores that are present on the uh, leaves but we don't call them um, stomata because they are not only helping them in uh, exchange of gas gases but they are taking the nutrients that are dissolved in water through the pores that are present in the leaves so we say that they do not have stomata but carbon dioxide is taking that is exchange of gases takes place to their body surface then underwater plants give out oxygen during photosynthesis which keeps the aquatic animals life so aquatic animals they breathe out carbon dioxide which is taken up by uh, these plants and these plants are uh, when they photosynthesize they take out oxygen gas which is taken up by aquatic animals so this is how the aquatic life uh, continues under water also next we have a category of floating plants right these are the floating plants and the examples are duckweed and water hyacinth so let us see the real pictures of floating plants water hyacinth duckweed and the water lettuce is another example so adaptations shown by floating plants are that they float on water are called floating plants they are small and light in weight yes they have to be small and light in weight so that is they can easily float on water then float on water because they have air filled inside their stems as we said in case of a lotus that the stems are hollow from inside so why they are hollow so that they become lightweight similarly the stems in case of floating plants is also hollow and which helps in floating roots absorb nutrients from water now since the roots of floating plants are not fixed to the water bed so they cannot absorb nutrients from the water bed so they directly absorb nutrients which are dissolved in water so now let us uh, take this question uh, list adaptations of emergent aquatic plants uh, when it comes to emergent uh, we we should immediately think of the plants which are present on the river banks or on the sides of the in shallow waters so this is the example bulrush if you remember the roots of emergent aquatic plants are fixed in the soil of shallow water bed then their leaves and stems extend out of the surface of the water body they are growing in and examples are bulrush or cattail arrowhead and sedges uh, let us take another question adaptations what are adaptations shown by lotus plant so when we talk about lotus plant we should know that lotus plant is an example of fixed plants so let us see all the adaptations that are shown by fixed plants so lotus plants are fixed to the water bed with the help of strong roots right they have long hollow stalks that keep the flowers and leaves floating on the surface of water the leaves of these plants have a waxy coating that prevents them from getting wet the leaves have stomata on the upper side in, instead of the lower side so this is about the lotus plant so let us take another question adaptation list adaptations shown by underwater plants so examples of underwater plants you remember if you remember velisneria so underwater plants grow and remain completely submerged in water they have thin narrow ribbon like leaves the leaves do not have stomata but they take in carbon dioxide from the water through their body surface underwater plants give out oxygen during photosynthesis which keeps the aquatic animals alive you understand what are aquatic animals see aqua means water so aquatic animals means water animals 
Hydrilla, Velisneria and pond weeds are the examples. Now, what are floating plants list adaptations shown by them? So, if we talk about floating plants, we know that plants that float on water are called floating plants. These plants float on water because they have air filled inside their stems. Some plants are very small and light in weight. The roots absorb nutrients directly from the water. Duckweed, water lettuce and water hyacinth are the examples. So you must have observed that uh, here uh, along with the explanation we have given one diagram also. So whenever you are writing these questions, answers somewhere, try making diagrams also because they will help you in uh, retaining the concept for long time. Now let us take this exercise, write true or false for the statements given below. Water lettuce floats on water, yes that is true. Sedges are fixed in water and hence are called fixed plants. Now sedges are definitely fixed in water but they are not called fixed plants, they are emergent plants. So that means this statement is false. Now, fixed plants have stomata on the upper side of their leaves. Yes, we know the examples of fixed plants, lotus and lily. So, they have stomata on the upper side. Duckweed is an example of emergent plant. No. Uh, the arrowhead plants have leaves and stems emerging out of the water surface. Yes, that is true. Arrowhead is an emergent plant that is why the leaves and stems are emerging out of the water surface. Now let us give a quick look to all the types of aquatic plants. So first are emergent plants examples are bulrush also called cattail, arrowhead and sedges. Next is fixed plants examples are lotus and water lily. Then we have underwater plants they remain submerged. Examples are Hydrilla and Velisneria. And last is floating plants. And the examples are duckweed and water hyacinth. So with this, we come to the end of this uh, topic. So uh, next time, children, we'll uh, take up uh, terrestrial plants in next video. And... Uh, Thank you for watching, thank you for listening and uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, until next, stay safe and take care of yourself. Thank you.